Welcome to another episode of the Marvel Masterworks podcast and vidcast. I am your host, Adam, and with me is my co-host, Donnie. Donnie, how's it going? What's up, WandaVision fans? Remember, if you're at your local re- retail store and there are no Marvel Legends available, it was the Enthusiast all along. It's the Emerald Enthusiast. You bought all the toys, did you? <laughs> why, why am I not shocked by this development? Um, <laughs> given your room, but yeah. Uh, now, where did the Marvel toys go? Because that's clearly... Uh, I actually do have, have a Marvel Legends wall over here. You just can't see it. Oh, okay. All right. So yeah. you're, you're, you're doing, you're doing a, 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 a multiverse crossover with DC and, and Marvel characters. Yeah, I, and yeah, I have that. I have some Star Wars. So uh, you I could have... actually sit in your room and play DC versus Marvel. I could if I wanted to. Yeah, play that's a good story. idea. <laughs> yeah. And I could throw Kofi Kingston in as well. Yeah, as, uh, with a foreign object, you know, you could bring in the the, the, the flute that uh, the, the Biggie used to carry around, the, or the, the trumpet or whatever. It was. The trombone, yeah, that was Xavier Woods though. So yeah, yeah. one one of the two. Of them. All I remember, <laughs> all I remember is the pancakes, and I was like, I want pancakes. Uh, <laughs> I actually have a pancake accessory that that one of the figures holds. So oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, black uh, belt and nerd foo. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Um, <laughs> all right, so of course we're going to be uh, touching on. Today, the main, the main meat of our show is going to be WandaVision, episodes 7 and 8. Yes. Uh, we're nearing the finale, uh, which is one week away, and we will, we will be covering that, of course. But um, the before that, let's go through our customary uh, you know, pleasantries. Uh, so, Donnie, in terms of... Watching first. What have you been watching aside from from WandaVision? Aside from WandaVision, uh, Clone Wars, Supergirl, and of course this week I watched the Superman and Lois pilot, and that was the highlight of the week for me as far as entertainment goes. Indeed, I so. I watched the Superman and Lois pilot as, as and well, we reviewed it, me and Stephen and, and our guest Mario. You can, you can find that on YouTube, on the Multiverse Musings YouTube channel. I uh, listen to that. It's very enjoyable. Yeah. A lot of excitement um, surrounding that. And I... What else, have I, what else have I been watching besides that? That has nothing to do with, with Marvel or DC, but I've been watching you know, uh, a, little, uh, a lot more wrestling lately because it's WrestleMania season. And you're right. giving up for that, so I've been watching that. And uh, and yeah, that's what I've been watching. Yeah. And a good start to the season by your Toronto Maple Leafs. Oh, well, hockey is, is always that's that's <laughs> not that, that's part of that's like brushing my teeth and, and you know, I mean that's daily or every other well in the in the hockey case every other day I do brush my teeth daily <laughs> multiple, multiple, <laughs> multiple <would> times so. <laughs> multiple times as well. But um, but yeah, every other day I'm watching hockey. That's that's neither here nor there. Yeah, so. That's what we do here at Multiverse Musings, is we teach, teach you know, basic hygiene. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, why not? Um, and, uh, yeah, so they, that's what I've been watching. In terms of reading, Donnie, what, what's on your plate? Uh, what I have been reading this week, actually the only thing was the uh, Venom Omnibus 2, the Venomnibus. Uh, this this goes back and covers some I'm of his. Confused. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this goes back and covers a lot of those miniseries from the 90s. The first Eddie Brock run, yeah, cool, yeah, awesome. There are well, two of those. They're they're big, but they're very comprehensive, and that's why I like them. Yeah, I like those big uh, big uh, omnibuses. I mean, they don't have. Well, I was going to say I don't have many. I have a few. Yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, cool, my, awesome. My attitude towards comics is just like what Wanda said in Age of Ultron when she was like. I want the big one. That's what I think. When I see comics, I'm like, I want the big one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or give them, give me all of them. Uh, <laughs> you know that Gary You know that Gary Oldman gift, uh, all of it, when he's yelling all of them? <laughs> or every one of them, that's me when I go to the comic store. Right. <laughs> and then I come out broke. But anyway. Um, easy to do. Very easy. But I've been uh, reading, um, and this is very topical. I've been, I'm behind, uh, so I'm preface that. Okay. But I've read the first volume 
of each of Tanahisi Colts's Black Panther oh, excellent. And, and Captain America uh, runs. Yeah. Excellent choices. Uh, that is obviously topical because he's just been announced to write Superman. So that gave me the impetus to, to knock out a couple of volumes <laughs> yesterday, yeah. which I did. Uh, and I love it. And, and I have all the confidence in the world that he's going to do an excellent job. Yeah, yeah, I, I do too, and it's a, a lot of it's because of those two books. Because my my philosophy is this: if you can write a meaningful, well thought out, poignant Captain America story in 2020 and 2021, you can certainly you can certainly apply that those techniques to Superman. Because yes, they are different characters. But their moral code, their moral compass, their values are are are, are similar with each other. Um, yeah. yeah. Again, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, journalist, author, comic book writer, he's 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 yeah. Yeah. I'm not I'm not I'm not concerned. Uh, and he's got J.J. Abrams there uh, producing. So, so uh, the big blue Boy Scout, uh, whichever version it ends up being, is in good hands. And. Uh, I would Steve agree. And I will be diving more into that topic uh, while we're recording tomorrow, but and you, so you might see it either tomorrow or Monday. Would that be Krypton's legacy, or is that the? Well, it's both Krypton Legacy, which you can find on the Podbean and, and uh, iTunes. Yeah, and it's also the Multiverse Musings the Vidcast, which you Multiverse Musings the Vidcast available right here on YouTube. Right, so you'll be able to find that conversation uh, just about everywhere. Uh, so, yeah, so looking forward to having that discussion. But until tomorrow comes and I have that discussion with Stephen, you and I are going to have a good discussion about the last two episodes of One Division. So let's let's go. All right. So let's tackle like episode. That, segue, that was good. Yeah. Let's tackle episode number seven, Breaking <sighs> the Fourth Wall. So From the first wall to the last. Yeah. <laughs> good one. Fourth wall break inside a fourth wall break. That's like yeah. 16 walls, <laughs> as Deadpool said. So this episode starts out, uh, we see that Wanda is talking directly to the camera again. And a, a lot of people have, you know, drawn the comparison to a lot of early, you know, 2000 shows, the 2000s. Yeah. Um, you know, I said last episode, it reminds me a lot of Bernie Mac. Uh, oh, I guess, yeah, yeah not, not a lot of people. Uh, people talked about other shows. But uh, it, it reminded me a lot of Bernie Mac. And yeah, uh, I, I, one of the lines that I like is she says, you know, we've all been there, right? Letting our fear and anger get the best of us. And and uh, I thought to myself, somewhere in the multiverse, you know, Atrocitus is just wringing his hands and going, yeah, I got a red lantern in waiting right here. <laughs> yeah. well, so, can, you imagine, can you imagine Wanda as a red lantern? Oh, uh, it would Oh, it would be cool. poor vision. <laughs> <laughs> he would. He'd be chasing the Red Lanterns Dude, around trying to get him. No, okay, you're gonna get it now. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I love the shifting realities that we see in the beginning, as as well as that quirky little intro for WandaVision. And again, a lot of people drew comparisons to a lot of you know shows that were on 15, 20 years ago. Well, so what did? Is one of them, I think, right? Yeah, that's definitely one of them that I heard a lot. So what did you think of the first few minutes of this episode? Well, I do like whenever Wanda is sort of doing that that fourth wall kind of breaking because I think in those moments she kind of reveals her mental state like you know what she's going through yes uh, and that's her being open and honest where the rest of the portions of, of the show in TV land you know, in the TV land uh, you know portion of it not TV land the channel but you know what I mean um, right that portion of it is a facade. So when she's talking to the camera, it's like her being honest. It's like those reality shows, you know, like Big Brother, where they go in the room. And I don't watch Big Brother, but I know enough of the, the right. Yeah, the room where it's that confessional. It's yes. that kind. Of yeah. Thing. So I kind of like that because we're getting her sort of honest, raw reactions. Yeah, excellent comparison. Yeah, and uh, and I like a lot in where she said uh, it's probably just a case of the Mondays. I'm like. Little bit more than that, I believe. <laughs> yeah, this is this is now borderline full week uh, issues, yeah. not, not just Monday. Yeah. yeah. So uh, next we see uh, the the show cuts to the sword retreat, 
and where they said that you know the signal that was coming from inside the hex, aka the West uh, Westview anomaly, that that's gone. Uh, so they don't know what's going on inside of the anomaly anymore. And uh, one of the things I noticed though about this though, you really don't get a drop in terms of quality as far as between the movies and this show. This oh, is definitely on par. When you look at the at the hex, when you look at the the vehicles, the backdrop, the costuming, this show is definitely on par with the MCU. Absolutely, and I think that's why you know we're dealing with shorter episode seasons so that the budget can be maintained at a high level. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And uh, so back in uh, back to the show uh, inside of the hex, Vision wakes up and he finds Darcy, who uh, is again she's part of the hex at this point. We saw her in episode six. We saw that you know the borders of the hex get pushed outward and she was absorbed into it. Yes. So she is now part. She's the uh, the escape artist in the circus, and uh, he goes over and tries to talk to her and she says, "Can I help you, Creeper?" And I'm like, "Wait a minute, Creeper's a DC property." I'm like, don't get things mixed up here. Hey, listen, the multiverse, right? It's, <laughs> there's cracks in the multiverse on both sides. Uh, but no, seriously, you know, he goes over looking for help, and he kind of gives her the whammy uh, to eventually kind of snap her back into reality to get her help. Back outside, we see that Wiccan and Speed, they're having trouble with the games in the house. Again, there's these shifting realities, and you see all these items that are being changed in an instant. Yeah, from and, different eras, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And Wanda tells them, she's like, I don't have all the answers as to what's happening. So she doesn't know. So what what were your impressions of that? The fact that she doesn't know? Yeah, uh, yeah. I thought, okay, two things are happening. Either there's a spell put on her by somebody else, like she's under the influence of somebody else, or she could have had such a psychotic break because of the death of Vision that she's just blocking out what she's doing. Mm-hmm. Like the fact that she's responsible for this, she's blocking it out. Yeah. So then we see Agnes come in and she says that, you know, she will take care of the kids and give Wanda a little time by herself. But Agnes is starting to act more and more um, sketchy. She says some questionable things, including, you know, she was like, I don't bite. She told the kids I don't bite. But then she said, Again, uh, as an aside, I actually did bite a kid once. And I'm like, okay, you know, we talked all the way back. That's creepy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In our first episode, I was like, Agnes, something is going on here. Yeah. And I'm like, she knows a lot more than she's letting on. She now we, on. Yeah. She so, uh, so, you know, we, we go back to the, um, we go back to the area where the, 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 the sword retreat is. And we learn that, uh, that Hayward wasn't just decommissioning Vision, he was actually trying to bring him back online as a weapon. Yeah, yeah. That's very important. It is. So, it is yeah. Happens. So, what, yeah, what was your impression of that when you had that exchange between uh, Jimmy and Monica? Well, I mean, think about, think about it. I, I mean, v- Vision was created by uh, Tony and... and, and, and uh, Bruce Banner. Right. Which is different from the comics, by the Tony way. Tony Stark and Bruce Banner, I should say. Right. Who were part of the Avengers at the time. Right. And at that point in time, the, the Avengers were kind of working under the auspices of the government when Vision was created. Right? They were part of the you know, SHIELD, which is a government mm-hmm. agency. So therefore thinking of vision as government property and wanting to use him as a weapon isn't wrong it isn't I can't say that it's it's wrong because it's kind of right he's a machine like he's a machine right well he, and that's he was what I like built to deter threats so that eventually the Avengers would have to be the Avengers right so in, in that sense he is a weapon right and so that's what I like about a lot of you know the Marvel Universe obviously we know being the people on the other side of the camera lens, that Vision becomes a sentient being. But you can understand the people who think that he's just a robot and that he's yeah, just a yeah. weapon. So yeah. yeah, you see both sides of it. Yeah, right. So, 
Monica tries to get into the hex here by riding a space rover into the hex and it doesn't work. And that's when, again, I'm talking about the the effects and the visuals of this are just amazing. I mean, looks, that's something that, really yeah, good. yeah, that's something that even 15 years ago, I don't think you could have made it look good, especially on a TV show. Like, think about it. I think each, I think the whole series has a $100 million budget, so all six episodes. So, you know, I'm not that great at math, but, sorry, nine episodes. So what, it's about just over $10 million an episode yeah, to and, produce. Yeah, and it just, and everything, you know, looks amazing. So, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, the money is definitely on screen. Right. And so uh, we keep with the, you know, what we just talked about, you know, kind of the mockumentary format. And again, I saw a lot of people draw, um, draw, you know, parallels with Arrested Development, The Office, Modern Family, Parks and Recreation. By the way, that's a that last one. That's a show I really like. And we kind of see the characters, both you know, Monica um, and Vision, as well as Agnes. We see them talking to the camera. And uh, at one point, we see Wanda, who is again talking to the screen. She she says uh, she you know she's talking about what is going on, and all of a sudden we finally hear a voice coming from where we are, and she says, "Do you think this is what you deserve?" And Wanda responds, "Wait a minute, what? You're not supposed to talk." And so we we finally see that you know things are really starting to break apart here. In the meantime, we also see that Monica, even though she couldn't get through with the space rover, she forces her way through, and we hear that her DNA is actually changing by going back and forth through the hex. So what were your impressions of so, both of those things? Well, I thought in this year, well, when, when, first of all, one to say you're not supposed to talk, that was really sort of, that to me was, again, it's sort of like, I'm like, okay, it seems like somebody's controlling her now because she's talking to a person. Yeah. But at the same time, maybe her psychotic break, she's got multiple personalities. Sure. So so my mind was racing, what is the what like what is going on here? Either either theory could still be valid at this point. But you know, we also see Vision who, you know, he's trying to get back to Wanda and you know he's outside of the vehicle that he was in and he was like, Wait a minute, why why am I talking to you? Because he's in a chair and he's yeah, talking so directly to the knows, camera. Yeah, you're right. Even he knows something is is, is yeah. like it's not it's not reality. Um, but, and then in regards to Monica, is this how she gets her powers? Do you think like this, this event going back and forth is it what de it definitely seems series? that way? Uh, I I've heard that, you know, she's had a number of, of superhero names over the years and, and, and some different powers. I hear that she's going to be spectrum in this yeah. and yeah, the and costume we see that her, she had, we see yeah. her in that costume, right? Which yeah. was kind of, which was really cool. Also with the blue eyes, suggesting that she's like internalizing some of this power. Yeah, yeah. So I thought yeah. that was cool because, you know, they're setting her on her path to Captain Marvel too, which is which is important. So yeah, very much so. Uh, and I also need to to, to um, cite Paul Bettany. He was really amazing in this. Uh, his role in this obviously is very important. And you know, I've, I've been a fan of his all the way back to A Knight's Tale when I first saw him in that which was a great movie. I saw a little bit more of him than I wanted to see in that, but nonetheless, it was a overall really enjoyable experience. Yeah. But, um, yeah, if, and you know the scene I'm talking about, if you've seen The Knights. <laughs> I could have done without that, but nonetheless, the guy's yeah, an no outstanding thanks, actor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, uh, yeah. I mean, there are certain things I don't want to see. <laughs> but I'm, I'm sure... Paul Bettany is one of them. Yeah, I, I'm sure it pleased some people, so again, no uh, judge. Yeah, you got to please the ladies, too. Uh, you know, it's not just that. Right. Sure. Uh, Equality for everybody, right? Yeah. And, you know, I also noticed uh, this week, too, we had the commercial for the Nexus, which uh, actually in the Marvel Universe, it's funny that you and I just covered the confluence over in D.C. with uh, Aquaman because the Nexus is sort of similar to that. It's kind of these, these like, intersecting points in reality. And uh, a lot of people have theorized that maybe, you know, Wanda is becoming a Nexus being and that she can, like, you know, travel to different realities and things like that on this show. And I keep reading that that's going to have a, a something involved with Loki's series. 
Yeah, it might well, yeah. So, Again, if you're talking about traveling between, you know, different realities, different planes of existence, it very well could. So. Yeah, so who knows? But yeah, that was interesting. I love how the commercials, or the, even the fake commercials, uh, have an impact and bearing on, on the series. Yeah, they, they add to the narrative. Yeah, they and they throw you little is, uh, little Easter eggs. And that's, yeah, yeah I definitely appreciate that. And, uh, and, and I also like that, you know, at, at one point, you know, Agnes asks, uh, she's talking to, you know, the, the boys and she asks uh, Wiccan, she's like, you know, penny for your thoughts, you know, and uh, he says, I hate Brenda and a bad guy hit me in the shin and I peed all over my pants. You didn't get that reference, but some people will. <laughs> you have to look up the song Seagull Stop It Now and you'll get that reference. Anyway. Okay. All right. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll do that after the show. But um, I also oh. want to say that, uh, yeah, Monica uh, Rambeau, obviously we knew that her profile was going to be raised by this. Um, Agent Wu, again, he is he is becoming a very important character, too, because of this show. You know what's funny is seeing him in, in, in uh, Young Rock as well. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, that's another show I've been watching, yeah. Oh, yeah, I forget, I forget from that. Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, I you know I just I really like how things develop here, and um, you see that Monica is really suffering. And at one point she says, uh, you know, I can't control the pain anymore, and I don't think I want to, and because it's my truth. Yeah. So you, see, uh, you, you really see her. I really see her as being about to let loose. Yeah. Yeah. And now the episode ends with a big reveal, and that is when Wanda goes down into her basement, and we see that it looks uh, very kind of creepy. Mm. What, what was your first impressions of that when she went downstairs? It kind of felt like some kind of horror movie. Like, like yeah. It was, it was yeah. detouring into a horror movie kind of scenario, which is cool. Like I let, That's part of the fun of the show is the detour... The detours in genre, like the, you, like you get a little bit of, of of different things within one episode. You get a comedy, you get you know dramatic stuff, you get sci-fi action stuff. There, there's literally it's a buffet of a little bit of everything. Right, it's not just one flavor with Marvel. You know, they can give you a number of types of stories. Yeah. They can give you many themes within the same I mean, show. You, you might be able to say that for like Phase One, but now we're at a point where yeah. Yeah, you, you get a lot of you get a, a you know a very um, very different and you know a big variety of which things is, which within is, the same which thing. Which is yeah. good, which is what you want. I mean, like over on the DC side, we can have something like Aquaman. We can have something like Birds of Prey. You know, there's there's variety, right? Right. Yeah. Which is what you want. You don't want yeah. monotony. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. The same. So. Back down uh, in the basement where Wanda comes face to face with Agnes. And we see that Agnes, uh, she's holding a rabbit whom she identifies as uh, Scratch. And call that. It bugs, but that's just me. Yeah, you know, call it what? Bugs. You know, bugs. <laughs> well, that should have been. Uh, that should have been a, a red flag for people who are familiar with the comics. Uh, Nicholas Scratch is the son of Agatha Harkness. Yeah. And so we hear that name for the first time on this show. And then we get a flashback throughout all the previous episodes with this uh, little montage that has music that is very reminiscent of the Munsters intro. Yeah, well, yeah, I was going to mention that. Yeah, and I love the Munsters, by the way. Yeah, uh, likewise. And, uh, and of course, it shows that... I watched that it in reruns, of course, because I'm... Well, likewise, likewise. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, that's an old, you know, I'm old, but yeah, I'm not that old. old. We're not that old. Yeah, there, we <laughs> there we go. go there we go. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, we hear her name, Agatha Harkness, and we see that she's responsible for like all these, you know, little mishaps and all these little atrocities that have happened within the hex. Yeah. And uh, she ends it by saying, and I gave David Arquette the WCW title too. You know, that was harp. Just kidding. So what? <laughs> <laughs> I knew I'd get you with that one. Uh, I mean, the booking on that oh, it brings back bad memories. That was really the start of the downfall of WCW when they started yeah. bring gimmicks like that in. It's like, oh, that moment was an abomination. But you know, back to what we're actually talking about here. Yeah. She says, "And I killed Sparky too." 
So we see that she has been, you know, responsible for uh, all this villainy behind the behind the scenes. So what was your beyond, you know, recognizing the monsters? What was your impression of well, that? Well, I love the fact that now we know uh, because there's all there was all this speculation of, ooh, is it Mephisto? Is it this person? Is it that person? And you know, they literally named every every uh, you know Tom, Dick, and Harry in the Marvel universe. <laughs> And now we know, like now it's it was Agatha Harkness, and, yeah. and again, if you follow the comics, you kind of get that hint. Yeah, you know, Agnes, Agatha, it's 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 all there, right? right? Um, now I'll say this: even though I was familiar somewhat with Agatha Harkness, I I never picked up on that because if you've ever seen Agatha in the comics, yeah, she, she looks, looks different. Yeah, she looks She's like a grumpy different. Aunt May. I mean, yeah. she doesn't look anything yeah. like but what she does on the show. Watch so. Spider Man Homecoming and look what Aunt May looks like. So you never know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, so uh, you know, oh I, yeah, I might as well do it since I brought it up. Marissa Tomei, <laughs> you're on the list. <laughs> All right, um, but uh, yeah, no, I, I mean. I love the fact that uh, well, what's the actress's name? Um, Catherine Hahn. Yeah, she was just, and I mean this in a good way. She was chewing up the scenery. Yeah, like it was a Thanksgiving dinner, um, and it was great. Like she, she, she went full villainy, and, and, and like you know, and I, and I liked it. And, and going that slightly over the top for that character, I think works. And in this, in the context of how the shows framed certain things. It works here. Um, yeah, yeah. The question that I have, because uh, um, then, <clears throat> the question that I have is, if she's behind all this, are the kids even real? Well. You know, I l let me give you a little uh, brief uh, snapshot into the comics. And uh, first of all, Agatha is very different from her comic version. Yeah. But uh, you know, you talk about the kids being being real. Uh, she it, that does tie in here in the comics. Uh, she's over ten thousand years old. Oh, wow. She is. Yeah. She is. Uh, she's first introduced in the Fantastic Four as a caretaker to um, Franklin Richards. Uh, she lives in a place called New Salem, which is a haven for for witches. She eventually leaves, and her son Nicholas Scratch deems her a heretic because she left, and uh, he goes after her. In the 1980s, she actually kind of tutored Scarlet Witch with her powers and was trying to help her develop those. And the Salem Seven eventually kills Agatha, but her spirit energy basically interacts with Wanda, and that's what helps Wanda impregnate herself. Yeah. So okay. it's not, she doesn't, it's not anything having to do with vision that Wanda impregnates herself with. But later on, we learn that the kids are actually fragments of the demon Mephisto. So that's actually where they came from. And later on, Mephisto figures this out, and he reabsorbs the kids. Okay. So the kids are... Real in one sense, and but not real as in like their own sentient selves in another sense, at least early on in their stories. Okay. And Agatha actually really worries about after this happens that the, you know the, the kids are taken back by Mephisto, and so she erases Wanda's memory of the children because she worries about her, you know, uh, basically you know losing her mind, and and eventually Wanda regains the memories and she kills Agatha again. Hmm. And again, wow. and yeah, so Wanda's a very uh, kind a of, <laughs> oh yeah, that's a lot. Uh, she's a very minor character, but she's been involved in a lot of, you know, major events. Yeah. And um, she was resurrected. I, I believe it was 2017. She was resurrected in a story where we learned that Wanda gets her, magic from a uh, particular place as a as does Agatha Harkness but I think we should get into that on the the next episode because we're we're ready to talk about um on the edge of town um okay. no excuse me uh, previously on WandaVision but what do you think of this episode well just quickly the ending the ending yeah. where we have Monica looking in the uh, uh, storm cellar I guess you 
Yes. Yeah. So, something like that. By the way, which which what look it looked like the uh, the the Barney poop that we talked about in Justice League. So maybe these two worlds are connected. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so my, when she turns around, she sees Evan Peters like he looks like a hobo. Right. <laughs> Uh, and, and that was my, my, you know, my clear indication that, okay, it doesn't look like this is going to be a multiverse version of Quicksilver. Mm-hmm. This is just, in actual fact, somebody that Agatha manipul- manipulated. Yeah. So that was interesting uh, yeah. to me. She answers that question in the next episode, but she go does, ahead. Yeah. yeah. But um, so, in terms of what I thought of the, how are we rating this again? Uh, weren't we giving letter grades? I think so. I keep forgetting. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we we should really write that down and have it. You know. <laughs> uh, okay. Letter letter grades. I'm going to give this. I'm going to give it an A minus. Okay. Really solid episode. Yeah. Um, a lot of answers. Um. It left me anticipating more, and we're going to talk about more and more as soon as you give your rating. So, uh, I'm going to give it an A. There was very little to dislike. Uh, yeah. You know, there were a few points when you know things meandered just a little bit as far as the narrative, but things have really built from episode to episode, and yeah. every week, like I just can't wait to, for this to come on. So, yeah. So I give I it agree. an A. Yes. Agreed. Um, sweet. Cool. Yeah. Uh, all right. So next episode it is. Yeah. Next episode, and that is previously on Wandavision, and we get to see Agatha Harkness's backstory, which again, very different than the 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 Agatha Harkness that I knew from the comics. I can't say that I've read every story with her. Maybe there's something out there, but I've never seen anything like this. Uh, we see that she was an extremely powerful witch. Her coven turns against her. They tried to stop her because they feared this darkness within her, and they're no match for her, including her own mother. And she just kind of siphons the magic out of them. Yeah, that was that was ins- that was an insane sequence. Uh, I, I just can't believe the like that's movie quality yeah. stuff. Uh, yeah, I, I was just getting ready to say the same thing. I that was you know big blockbuster visuals right there. It was amazing. Yeah, that's top tier. You know, like, yeah. Uh, and I've always been fascinated by uh, uh, um, I'm always fascinated by the uh, the Salem witch stuff and, and all that you know jazz. Yeah. So to incorporate like sort of real world events into this you know fa- fantasy scenario. Then, you know, I'm I'm all for that. Like it grounds it. I mean, I don't want everything to be grounded in like absolute reality, but to to frame it in in real world context, I like when they do that. Yeah. When I do want to say again, I was talking earlier about the comics in the Marvel universe. The the sources of magic can get a little convoluted and, and confusing. Early on in in her appearances, Agatha just seemed to kind of draw her magic from the like ambient magic of the universe. But yeah. later on, what I'm hearing now is that she's drawing it from a source called the Goddess of Witchcraft. Ooh, okay. And she's extremely powerful, not not necessarily on par with Doctor Strange, but obviously very powerful. What I do remember is uh, her first appearance. Um, she was again. She she was protecting Franklin Richards, yeah. and uh, uh, oh, what were the names of the uh, the the vill- the frightful four came in and, and tried to uh, attack Franklin. That sounds and like she- the bizarro version of the Fantastic Four. Is that what it yeah. is? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They were they were villains. They were created as kind of the opposite of the Fantastic Four. Okay. And yeah, they came in and she was like, "You want to play? We can play." And she just like overwhelms them. She was like, "You know, don't hate the player, hate the game." Bam and extremely she powerful. Did she say that? Because that would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe she actually said that. Oh, okay. I don't know why Booker T popped into my mind, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, a little so bit she's... of Booker T is always good. 
<laughs> yeah, they should. Can, can you imagine they cast uh, Booker T? Is what's the what's the character's name? Blue Marvel. I keep hearing about this Blue Marvel. Oh yeah, he could he could definitely do it. I, can you imagine Blue actor. Marvel standing? Because I've seen the image of him in costume, right? Yeah. He might all of a sudden he starts doing this and does the spinner Rooney in in mid back. Listen. Guardians of the Galaxy can have a dance off in the middle of a world ending battle. Why can't I have a spin rooting? <laughs> so anyway, back to the episode. Uh, she set up this 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 hex so Wanda can't use her power, and she imprisons Wanda in these like energy bands. Yeah. And she basically forces <laughs> Wanda. She's very Agatha, that is, very curious as to how Wanda is creating the hex how she is yeah. wielding all this power. And yeah. so we see then Wanda take a trip back and we see Wanda's origin both as a, as a kid yeah. and uh, we see her get her powers. And one of the interesting things, one of the interesting lines was Agatha says, so this interaction with the Infinity Stone, this is not an exact quote, but she said, it kind of enhanced something that would have otherwise died on the vine. So before we kind of thought that it was Baron von Strucker that right. gave Wanda all of her power. That's not true now. It seems that she was she was kind of prone to having, you know, magic within her, and the Infinity Stone amplified that. So what yeah. did you think of that? Um, I first of all going into like the first sort of vision we saw. Uh, Flashback, not vision, and not vision. The character. I mean, I mean, I mean, flashback. Right. Um, <laughs> it, can, it can get very confusing. <laughs> but um, the first flashback we saw went to her childhood. I like that it, it explains her fascination and obsession with sitcoms. Mm -hmm. um, that was like it, it frames why they 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 did the series the way they did the series, which I like. But and like you see her in a happier time with her family, right? Yeah. And then you see the tragedy that's struck her. Yeah. How it relates to Stark, and and now you're seeing the initial reason why she hated Stark so much, and why she would align with Ultron. Right. And yeah. Now you get the visual of that. Mm hmm And it's easy to understand, especially for a child who's been traumatized yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. But also. I'm not gonna lie. When they were trapped in the in the in the rubble, in the rubble, not rebel, rubble. <laughs> uh, I can't talk today. Yeah, good, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm talking like Bizarro. Next step is Bizarro conversation. <laughs> Imagine that, and people would love listening to that. Be trapped um, in rubble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People would love. I'm sure they would love that. But um, but when when they were trapped, I was kind of I knew I kind of knew it was gonna happen. But I was so hoping Michael Fassbender's Magneto would come down and like start freeing them and say, "Come with me, my children." But it never happened. Oh, that would have like, been. Come on, give me that. that. Like, yeah, that, yeah, that would have been brilliant. Batista, yeah. and he came back to WWE the last time. Give me what I want, Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, yeah, no. So I, I really like that. Uh, I mean, do you, do we want to talk about the the her flashbacks all as one thing, or, or sure, we yeah. go through individually? Uh, okay, and then the second flashback was her being being experimented on yeah. by Von Strucker, right? And, and we right. see uh, Loki's uh, hokey pokey stick uh, that I think <laughs> Iron Man called it. Um, hokey uh, pokey stick, yeah. Um, right, and, and so like, first of all, they made Elizabeth Olsen look so grunge, like, like yeah. so, and yet I'm like. I'm still so attracted to you. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I knew you were going to say I, that. I, I knew you were going to say that. You're still so damn, so damn attracted. It's unbelievable. Uh, come on. You yeah. know, we, we all knew I was going there. It's impossible yeah. not to. She's on the list. I yeah. told you this many times. Right. Um, so, yeah, but what was your reaction when, when uh, she still had on the uh, Scarlet Witch tights and uh, when she woke up in her bed? And I was like, she looked down and was like, oh my goodness. At the beginning of the, the uh, episode seven. Yeah, I was like, really? Yeah, like, but. But I like that in that moment when you see her, like she's uh, sort of the, the whole scene with the Infinity Stone and it's coming yeah. towards her, and then it goes it goes gold, and it, and you have that whole I called it the the Phoenix Force kind of kind of effect where she's being engulfed by this by this energy and, and all that. 
and then within that you see the the shadow or the, the, the image of her as full blown Scarlet Witch. Yeah. Man, I just lost it because you see you see the modern day like big budget Marvel effects of yeah. the of the of the suit in its you know big screen mode, I call it, right? Right. And it it looks it like it's true to the comics, but it looks high grade. And yeah. I, I'm like, okay, when we see her, because I know we're probably not going to see her in that for the rest of the series, but when we see her in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, can I have her in that outfit? Like, don't get me wrong. She looks good in that red leather jacket in the whole nine yards, and if she came to my door looking like that, I, I'd go on a date with her. But <laughs> I want to see her in that full-blown costume. Like, I, like I need it. Okay. I need, I need it like I need an espresso at every, every day at twelve thirty in the afternoon. <laughs> so, Marvel, get on, get on the Doctor Strange, the Multiverse of Madness. I want to see it. Oh, I like that comparison a lot. <laughs> that's, that's when I pick my espresso. So, if anybody wants to send one over, you know, at twelve thirty, you know, via pay, listen. If you if you, you forget about Patreon, send me send me an espresso every day, and I'll I know. And, and you'll get a gift. No, you won't get a gift. I, I don't have that kind of money. Because then I'm going to be, I'm going to be flooded with espresso. I won't be able to drink them all. <clears throat> but anyway, um, enough of this espresso talk. Because uh, then I'm going to want one, and I've already had one. <laughs> Go to our Patreon uh, and buy Adam an espresso. Yeah, and while you're at it, send the dessert because uh, I don't know if I'm going to get that muffin. Uh, <laughs> but um, but uh, actually, now Stephen's kind of been talking about uh, cannoli. So I mean, we've we, we've we've made an upgrade. Uh, with oh, okay. muffins to cannoli, so yeah. So if you want one, put in your order there, Don. All right. Um, but then the, the third, I think, and final flashback, or yeah, mm -hmm. is the her at Avengers Mansion just after all that went down and Pietro died in the whole yards, and she's right. sitting there watching Vision, uh, watching Vision, she's watching TV, and Vision is watching her through the other side of the wall, which right. is kind of creepy, but I, I get it. Um, and he he he, tell, he he sort of uh, phases into the door like he did. I remember they told him in one of the Avengers movies, "You shouldn't do that," and he apologized for it while he was doing that here. And uh, he he sits down with her and started uh, starts consoling her, you know, talking with her and, and trying to understand her sadness because he, he hasn't experienced that because because he's never lost somebody because he doesn't have anybody. Um, um, but I like the quote he said where he's like... I was just getting ready to say the same thing. Go ahead. Sadness is just love persevering. Actually, it was, actually I think the line was, what, it, what is grief if not love grief, persevering? Sorry. Yeah, yes. grief, sorry. I, I've got to say, that's one I've of the never, most powerful I've never things I've ever heard. It. I've never thought about it like that. Yes. I actually looked it up to see if that was based on uh, another quote from another form of like media or you know something like that. It's not. That was an original quote. That's an amazing quote. I, I've never thought of it like that, but man, so does profound. That, that that helps. I, I mean, retroactively, I, I can go back and think every time I felt grief over losing somebody, right? Instead of suppre not suppressing it, but trying to quickly push past that, as we often do, there's something to be said for just letting it letting it happen because that's what it, you know. If right. you think about it in that context then I, I really like that quote. That was really, really well done. That was very profound. Just and amazing. anybody that yeah. says anybody that, that criticizes the MCU for being cookie cutter, look at that look at that quote. And, yeah. and, and, and you know uh, it's more than a roller coaster ride, Martin Scorsese. So there right. and, and that quote is proof of that. Right. So I really like that. And, but also in that moment where he's you know he's just listening and trying to be attentive and trying to comfort her. I really think you. that's when I started seeing. That moment was when it clicked for me that, no, he's not a, just a robot. He is a sentient being. That's yes. when it clicked. And yeah. that's when I, look, I, you, you, you know that I'm not into the shipping thing. Unless it's an Amazon product uh, coming to me, <laughs> which, I, which I actually have one coming to me. I, I ordered, uh, because Raphael is my favorite Ninja Turtle, I ordered the uh, Funko Pop of the the movie Ninja Turtle Raphael. So I approve. Yes, I'm, I'm waiting for that Amazon. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> I know. Listen, I, I'm I'm giving some some slack 
on how long it's taking because we're in a pandemic. But uh, you know, like, yeah, don't take too much. <laughs> you, to keep it within the Marvel family, you wouldn't. You, don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. <laughs> I don't turn green. I don't turn green. I turn blue because of the Leafs. And, and when I'm angry, All right, yes. <laughs> when I'm angry, nine times out of ten, it's the Leafs' fault. <laughs> and the other one percent is probably me thinking about Batman and Robin. But yeah. I digress. Um, so before we get to an, I, I should say that that uh, the answer to the question about Pietro, what, yeah. um, Agnes, she mentions necromancy. Yeah. That she actually, you know, Tried. she I yeah. Yeah. yeah, so she she kind of was in control of Pietro's body, but that's that's how he was in this series. So yeah, but it wasn't. But the, the, I'm like, but that's not the same guy. How can he be? Well, no, that it no that, but that's definitely the one that Wanda in episode six when she looked at him and he looked like a corpse with the, the holes in him. That was definitely who she was talking to at that time. But yeah, I understand that, but it still looks like. Evan Peters, you know what I mean? Right, right, exactly. Yeah, man, look, don't, don't get me wrong. I, I like I like the explain that they explained it. I still would have preferred if he was Quicksilver pulled from a, the multiverse just to screw with her. Right. But you know, I don't know that 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 is not still in play because you know the the Pietro that we see at the end of episode seven is that the same one? I'm not but, sure that but it is. is. That, but it, but my question is: Is Hobo uh, Hobo Evan Peters, so <laughs> Pietro. Yeah, well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't is know. Is it random neighborhood guy number five? You know what I mean? Because <laughs> um, that's how you'd be referred to in the credits. So, random neighborhood guy number five. I like it. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm look to me. I get the meta aspect of the casting, but once you pull that card, I I I, I want it to be him. I want it to be the character he played. It would be, can you, like, imagine, I mean, they kind of did it. With Brandon Roth, we haven't played the Adam, but imagine they cast him in Crisis, you know, and, and give you this hope that he's Superman, he's his Superman, and then say, yeah, but not really, he wasn't really his version of Superman. Right. That would have pissed me off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because that was my favorite part of, of Crisis on Infinite Earths, Brandon Roth, Superman. Um, I really I love the Kingdom Come outfit, by the way. But oh, I digress. Yeah. Oh, that thing is yeah. a thing. So. Between between that and, and the Action Comics number one, so you know, CW, you really you really you really making me feel things. Um, yes. And it's not just man. Your cast is really hot. Um, <laughs> that's the usual thing that I'm thinking. Yeah. But um, but no. So like, I want like, I I don't want every single Fox Man mutant. Uh, to, to come over and play in the MCU, but I really, really love Evan Peters as Quicksilver. I, I yeah. like him better than, and no offense, but I like him better than Aaron Tucker Johnson. So at the thought of possibly having him play that role again in the MCU appeals to me, mm -hmm. and if that's not, if that ends up not being the case, it's going to bum me out a little bit. Now, I'm not going to, I'm not going to scream sacrilege and, and, you know, give up on the MCU, it's just gonna bum me out a little bit. I'll get over it, but <laughs> it's gonna bum me out a bit. Uh, that I understand, but I, again, I don't think all the questions are answered there with well, him. I, I agree, I agree yeah. because I think yeah. we might see him in episode nine. Right. But as far as the end of this episode goes, we hear Speed and Wiccan calling for their mother. They're in trouble, and she goes outside, and they are being detained by Agatha Harkness. Yeah who then we have a huge reveal at the end of this episode. She says, you know, Wanda, you wield chaos magic. So she differentiates, like, what she does as opposed to what Wanda does. Yeah. And uh, in the comics, let me just give a brief explanation. Wanda has a type of magic that she's been touched by the Elder God and Archdemon Cthun. And so she has that type of ancient magic that is just kind of different from like ambient magic that sounds like just another wednesday in the mcu you know right exactly <laughs> it's like oh yeah here we go but uh, but uh agatha says because you wield the chaos magic she's like you are the scarlet witch and that's what i just wanted to get up off of my couch and cheer yeah. to finally hear that after yeah. all this time so and, and you know what scene i loved when when wanda's like she goes to the to the site of their of the house that she that they had 
that they had planned for. Yeah. And yeah. then she just, like, her grief overcomes her. And, like, her magic goes haywire. Her powers right. go haywire. And she creates everything. And that's where you see her create everything. Mm-hmm. Very, was, rem- very reminiscent of the House of M, like we've talked about before. Yeah. That was, that was insanity. That, so far, that's been my favorite sequence of the uh, of the series again also, very very big budget like no, yeah. yeah yeah and also seeing vision and pieces like that kind of freaked me out not gonna lie um, right uh, but the end credit sequence that's another thing we have to talk about yeah yeah so so we see that uh vision is imprisoned by hayward and this version of vision is all white and that harkens back to a West Coast Avengers story where uh, Vision was was captured, I believe it was by some like rogue agents of the U.S. government, and dissected because he had interfaced with the, the world's defense system. And they, I, I, I do remember the image of him being laid out on a table completely dissected, dissected with his, like, his uh, vibranium skin uh, peeled off of him. And this was very reminiscent of that. But when he comes back, he's more like an android because he actually had the uh, the brain waves of Wonder Man was part of what gave him his personality before. So when he's rebuilt by the Avengers and he comes back, he's all white and he's emotionless. And uh, that was very reminiscent of that. That uh, the scene at the end of WandaVision was very reminiscent of that old comic story. So what was your reaction to that? Um, well, I didn't know that it actually had basis in um, in um, actual the comic book. Uh, oh yes, yes. Uh, fact. So no, I'm, I'm assuming because he look he looks so so similar and it played out so similar. I don't know how much of the story they're actually going to use. Yeah. But yes, and, and he. Yeah. I, I when I saw him all white and he like opens his eyes, I'm like, man, this show just loves to creep me out. Yeah. <laughs> and De- definitely. The weird thing is, I usually watch it late at night, so then then it's like okay, now I got to go to sleep, <laughs> uh, which is not always easy uh, to do after the, uh, the fact. So, but it's really uh, uh, interesting and, and foreboding and makes him like, like I think him and him and. One, they're going to have a throwdown now. Yeah. Like, well, gonna, I also have the question, is the vision who's inside the head... Like they're going to have a WrestleMania moment here. Like, he's, right, he's, you know, is, ah. is that just a creation of Wanda, or do we have, like, two different visions now? Do we have the one outside oh, the hex? This could, one, be, yeah. this could be like a triple threat match. It could be Wanda versus White Vision versus Green and Red Vision. Right. Because, I mean, we, we saw like Vision... Undertaker versus Undertaker. <laughs> Fantastic. Let's hope it's faster than that match. Oh, my goodness. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. It's a 50-minute so, like, episode. <laughs> 45 is them fighting. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, you know, that that kind of sets up uh, episode number nine. And I uh, also want to say, before we give our rating here... I want to make it uh, known that now we have confirmation that the Dick Van Dyke show, Bewitched, the Brady Bunch, and Yo Gabba Gabba are continuity with the Marvel Universe, uh, <laughs> the Marvel Cinematic clear, Universe. Those were all ABC shows, right? I don't know which. I, I Probably because Disney, so, so, yeah. otherwise you'd have to pay the rights to show. Well, Yo Gabba Gabba was like, that's a kid's show. That was like Nickelodeon or Noggin or something like that. But uh, yeah. Yeah, so very, very interesting. Yeah, I I, I love the episode. I, I really did. Uh, it might be. Let me just say this: since the end of Captain America: The Winter Soldier, when you saw Wanda and Pietro in the credit scene, I've waited to hear the words "Scarlet Witch," and just to hear that just gave me such a yeah. thrill. So yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to think. This is probably, it's in a tie for my favorite episode so far with the reveal of Evan Peters at the door. That one was, that was, <clears throat> that one was really good. So in terms of a grade, I'm going to give this an A+. Likewise, I lo- yeah. I loved it. Yeah. yeah. 
I, I do like the idea that we're setting up that Marvel that we're going to see on screen the way it is in the comics that magic that people aren't just magical beings that there are different types of magic and they, they draw that's magic from yeah. yeah that it that it's you know it's complicated it's very yeah. uh Indeed. yeah it's 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 deep yeah I like that idea so Indeed. I like, yeah, agree, agree. Yeah. yeah yeah so two two the quote since I'm mixing reference wrestling references in here the quote Jr two slobber knockers worth of episodes. <laughs> Uh, you know, um, top notch, uh, top notch stuff. Uh, it's coming to an end. Um, next week. Next week is the final episode. Uh, we'll probably convene in the week between um, the finale and and the Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah. yeah, to do it. Yeah. yeah. So, so we'll be back, and and that'll be. Uh, that's going to be the epi- obviously the only episode we cover. If we can squeeze a comic book review in that relates to one division, we will. But but I'm not going to say what it is yet until uh, Donnie and I hash out the plan. Uh, but so that's what you have to look forward to in terms of the Marvel Masterworks podcast and vidcast. If you're watching the vidcast, uh, so we will be back. Yeah. By the way, Agatha Harkness, if you want to see her first appearance, it was Fantastic Four number 94, 1970. I believe I have that. That's from memory. So, Perfect. Yeah. Um, but that brings this episode to a close. We had fun doing it and talking about WandaVision. We hope you had fun watching slash listening. And if you want to continue the conversation about WandaVision or anything Marvel, yeah, comics or MCU related, you can on social media. Donnie, where can they track you down? You can find me on Twitter as the Emerald Enthusiast. If you want to talk about Marvel or DC or wrestling, anything along those lines, I'm always down to talk about that or collectibles. I also do collectible reviews both on Twitter and YouTube. Yeah. So look out for those are great, by the way. Um, so Thank you very much. Definitely yep. watch those and, and Give them likes and subscribe to Donnie's channel. Uh, and if you if you uh, want to talk to me, you can on Twitter at Adam underscore Lee's fan. That's my personal Twitter. The show Twitter is at MMNPDC. Uh, and then we also have a Facebook page. The link is down below. Click the link, ask for permission to join the group, and I will add you. We can continue the conversation there. Mm. But until the next... Uh, podcast and episode we want you to remember that one division is forever from her first flashback into her past to the last so long everybody dad joke